Hey, hey guys. Hey, hey. Go ahead and share this out. We're just getting set up. There we go. Nope, didn't do that right. Hey guys. We're about to get started, guys. Next month, I'm celebrating my three-year uh, mark of leaving my career and going full-time in my business. Has it been easy? Absolutely not. I'm not going to even sit here and lie to you. But has it been worth it? Absolutely. And so today, I'm going to be I'm going to share some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. Um, there we go. Yeah, so today I'm going to share some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. And I hope that you all are doing well. Go ahead and uh, say hey in the comments. <laughs> say hey in the comments. Hey, Takia. Say hey to me in the comments. Guys, let me know that you are here. I definitely want to see you. Oh, thank you, Takia. Long, long overdue. Long, long overdue, but I'm really excited. Um, we had an amazing time. We had an amazing, an, an amazing time shooting the photos, <clears throat> and so um, it was just a fun time. It was an absolutely fun time. So go ahead and share this out. Hey, Tanya. All right, go ahead and share this out, guys, with to your page or to someone who you know who needs this, guys. Today we're talking about uh, three years, four, five lessons that I've learned, you know, so far. And for me, next month is May. It doesn't seem like it's going to be May, right? But um, at the end of next month will mark three years since I officially left my teaching career and went full time in my business um, as a coach and as a consultant. And it has not been easy. It definitely has been, has had its challenging times, but this is part one of a series. So today I'm gonna just share just five basic lessons that I've learned along the way. And I may, you know, go a bit over. So right now I am um, on Instagram and I am on Facebook. So. If you see me looking in one direction, it's because I'm looking at one particular camera, but I am looking back and forth at the comments. So I'm really excited to talk about this because I've mentioned before, my hair is like, I got stray hairs all over the place, guys. Um, I've mentioned before, and I know that I've mentioned, you know, like, hey, I was a middle school language arts teacher, but I never really talked about like what that fully looked like, what that meant, and, and the exact process that I did to work myself out of my career into my own business, right? Hey, Kim on Instagram. Um, so today we're talking about three times as a, a three years as a full-time entrepreneur. Next month will be three years at the end of next month, because I think my last day on my job might've been like right before Memorial Day, like, you know, uh, May 24th, May 26th or something like that. Cause you know, we had to go back for post planning. So today, specifically, I'm going to share, you know, five lessons that I learned within this period of time. Um, and this is, again, part one. Now, just briefly, on Sunday, I'll be doing a free training, all right? And so, like I said, I've talked about this, but I've never really talked about it, right? So on Sunday, I'm going to be doing a free training. And on the, in this training, I'm going to be sharing three keys that took me from creating lesson plans to a multi six figure business in less than three years. Okay. I'll be talking about three key, three keys that took me from creating lesson plans to creating a multi six figure business in less than three years. And if you want to go ahead and register for that free training, you can visit jasminewomack.com forward slash lesson plans. <laughs> it's jasminewomack.com 
forward slash lesson plans. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. If you are watching, if you're if you're tuning in live or if you're watching the replay, um, if you're new to me, my name is Jasmine Womack. Uh, my students call me the Six Figure Storyteller, and I'm also referred to as the Harriet Tubman of self-publishing. Uh, corporate professionals and leaders come to me when they are ready to package their expertise into a high-end product and service, and they're ready to share their story. They're ready to share their message, share their story in the form of a book, a high-quality book, and use that book to create multiple streams of income, specifically high-end speaking and coaching. So I'm the person that people come to when they don't want to play around with their books, right? We want to build, we, we are building brands and businesses from our books, and I give my students the whole entire infrastructure on how to do that. My students are coming, they're knocking out their books, they're uh, changing lives, and they're also changing their own lives as well. So I'm, I'm really blessed to work with the professionals that I work with and help them get results so they can help other people get results that they're looking for. So it, it's, it, it's literally a, a, um, a roller coaster effect. Also, I'm hosting my first conference called the Six Figure Storyteller Live. This is a three day implementation conference and it's for aspiring and published authors you know, who want to leverage their expertise to write their book and build their business. So in order to get the early bird pricing was actually just released yesterday, but in order to get early bird pricing, you have to be on the wait list. All right. So if you need to join the wait list, you can visit jasminewomack.com forward slash SFS, six figure storyteller, SFS dash wait list. Okay. So, um, if you're on Instagram, you can just simply click the link in my bio to join the wait list. Wait list pricing is, um, several hundred dollars off and it's only available. It's going to expire on Monday at 11 59 PM Eastern. All right. So if you need to secure, um, if you want, if you're interested in that, definitely make sure that you're on a wait list. Now let's go ahead and get into today's topic. Today, I'm talking about five lessons that I learned. You know, and it, like I shared, at the end of next month, it will be three years full time as a full time entrepreneur. I worked my business for about two to three years while I was actually still teaching. And then at the end of 2018, I said sayonara. And I still do hold my teaching certificate, but I said sayonara to the traditional classroom. I took a chance on myself and went full time in my business. Three months later, I hit five figures and I haven't looked back. Five figures in a month. I had like my first ten thousand dollar month. Ninety days after, not even ninety days. It was like sixty days. It was like two months after leaving my job, and I haven't had anything less than that since then. Um, and so, I'm going to be sharing five lessons that I've learned along the way. So the first lesson that I learned, just within this whole entire time, within the time of me starting my book, growing my business up to the point where I was a, uh, could leave my job even up to now as a full-time coaching consultant. Number one, okay, all authors are not created equal. <laughs> all authors are not created equal. And I, I actually learned this around 2016, around the time I came out with my first book. And I still have to remind people of this now because oftentimes people will come to me, they're interested in my services, but sometimes they feel as if my services are a bit outside of their price range or whatnot. And I'm like, listen, all authors are not created equal. You know, um, they're like, uh, well, I found something else that's a little bit cheaper. And I'm like, yeah, but you're also getting a service that's reflective of that. So there are a lot of people that's out here that have books right? But they literally cannot do anything with the book that they write. I learned this with my first book. What you don't want to do is to invest time and money into something that you that's not going to make you money. So one of the things that we're not interested in doing is that we're not interested in creating passion projects. That means funneling money into something that is not going to yield a return. Especially you know, at, at least where I am, I'm 37 guys. I'm in the process of establishing uh, generational wealth, wealth. 
you know, uh, teaching my children these concepts so that they don't have to start from ground zero. I don't have the time, energy, or the money to put into something that is not going to reap a return, right? So this meant that when I started on my journey, I had to make a decision in regards to what type of author I wanted to be. I had, like being an author was not my first round of entrepreneurship, guys. I had previously had a non-emergency transportation company. Um, I, pre I previously had like, uh, I used to uh, make custom crochet outfits and Greek scarves and I used to set up at home commons and do all that. I, I, as a vendor, I've been doing this for quite some time because I come from a family of educators and I come from a family of entrepreneurs, right? So in the very beginning, I had to decide what did I want to do and what did I want to be? And I had to put my stake in the ground. I had to make that decision. And by that, I mean, like at the time I had several friends that had gone the self-publishing route, but they looked self-published. Have you guys ever seen a book that actually looked self-published? Like it didn't look professional. Yeah, they had the book. They had the, the, the cup, all of that. But it didn't, it wasn't a crisp, clean look. Like there was a distinct difference between a lot of the, the, the self-published books that I had seen my friends and associates create and the books in the bookstore. Have y'all ever seen a book that looks self-published? Like it just looked cheap. Y'all are here with me. Talk to, talk to me in the comments. You might look on the back. It doesn't have a, it doesn't even have a barcode on the back. The synopsis on the back looks all janky. Like is there's no type of structure. It's all one big block. The cover design on the front is not crisp. It's not clean. It looks jumbled. It looks like it's too much going on. It just does not look professional. And it de definitely doesn't look like anything that's going to encourage someone else to pay you more money. It doesn't look like a product that's going to push someone to want to do business with you. And I said, you know what? I don't want to look like that. I don't want to be like that. And my product has to look, even though my product is being self-published, it has to look like it's industry created. It has to look like it should be in Barnes and Nobles, or it can be in Barnes and Nobles. It has to look like something that's going to make me money. I want to create a high-end product that's going to position me as a professional and as an authority in my field. That was the first decision that I made, guys. And I also knew that with that, I had to deliver a certain quality product in terms of look, in terms of interior layout and design and in terms of content. I had to create something that was going to open additional doors for me. Right? I And, and you guys have to make that decision. And this is the decision that a lot of, you know, uh, authors who want to go into entrepreneurship well, you're going into entrepreneurship when you publish your book anyway. But some of the ones who claim that they want to go full time, this is the decision that they haven't made. Many self-published authors only make the decision to write and publish the book. They don't have the vision or they haven't developed the vision for what comes after the book. And you have to understand that anything that comes after the book, it starts before you even write a single word. So you have to make that decision. All authors are not created equal. What, what type of stake do you want to put in the ground for yourself? What type of brand do you want to have? What type of business do you want to have? I knew that I wanted a very clean, high-end professional look. I wanted to look different than everybody else that I knew. And back in 2015, 2016, some people were publishing books. It's not like it is now where it seems like everybody and their mom has a book on social media. You know, and so I knew that I wanted to create something that was crisp, clean, professional, and would stand out. And that's what I did. And you guys have to make that decision too. All right. I had to decide what I wanted. Also, along with that, I had to decide whether or not I wanted a side hustle 
or I wanted to go into full-time entrepreneurship. Now, there's nothing wrong with wanting to keep your nine to five and supplement your income with your business. There's nothing wrong with that. So I don't want you to feel like you have to go into full-time entrepreneurship. Full-time entrepreneurship is not for everybody. It takes a certain mindset. It takes a level of grit, a level of hustle that a lot of people don't have because if you don't work, you don't eat. Until you get to the point where your ideas are making money for you without you having to actively work. But that takes work to get into that position, right? A full-time entrepreneurship is not for everybody. I'm not just, I'm not even going to sit here and lie to you. It will call you on the carpet and tell you the truth about yourself. But there's absolutely nothing wrong. I believe that every person, especially every woman, should have a way in which she can generate income for herself on her own terms from her home. So you have to decide, and I had to decide, whether I wanted what I was doing to be a side hustle or whether I wanted it to be a full-time job. And I had to make sure that I, I started changing my mindset from an employee mindset to an entrepreneurial mindset. So this means that while I was at my job, I could, I had to start changing the way I looked at my job. And I'm like, you know what? My job is my client. They just got me under contract for, for, for a few hours and I got to do the best that I can do while I'm here from, from nine to five. And then from, for me, from eight to 11, go run my business because I had kids. So I had to run my business after they <laughs> went to bed. There is a difference. You have to start making that mindset shift. Now you have to determine whether or not this is a side hustle for you. And you're just trying to make some money to supplement what you're already doing or whether or not you want to go full time. Because if you want to go full time, there are some adjustments that you're going to have to make. If you want to be able to live comfortably, if you want to be able to put up for retirement, if you want to still be able to invest in your business and grow your business and still live a comfortable life, there are, still, there are going to be some adjustments that you're going to have to make. Okay. The second lesson that I learned, three years in full-time entrepreneurship, all right? The second lesson that I learned is, number two, what gets tracked grows. This means that even if you are, you know, just starting out, you need to start tracking your metrics. What time are you waking up every morning? How much time are you putting into your business? At, at the end of the week, what have you accomplished? And what has what what is the outcome of that? What is the outcome of your efforts? What do you have to show for that? For those of you all who have books, how many books are you ordering? How many are you selling? You know, where are you what where are your major channels that you're selling them? What are the platforms that you're using to sell them? You know, or are you selling them from speaking? Like, what do you do? You have to track your metrics and you need to start now. If you don't necessarily have a product yet and you might not have anything to track, this is where you start tracking your habits. All right, four days out the week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, I got up at five o'clock in the morning. I worked on my book or my business from five to six. During five to six a.m., these are the top three things that I was able to do during that time each and every day. And you keep a log of it. Like right now, I'm keeping a log um, of everything that I do. Because at the end of the year, I want to be able to share it as my own case study of how I generated seven figures in a year. So I literally track every single thing. All right. One of the reasons we were able to do so well this year is because I nailed down on tracking instead of, oh, you know what? I got to launch or I need to launch next month or I need to do X, Y, and Z like next month, you know, let me kind of rush and put something. No, this whole entire year was planned out in January. Now, yes, there are some adjustments that have to be made in terms of dates as we see what's working, what's not working, you know, um, so that we all avoid overwhelm and exhaustion. But the year is planned out. My coaching is planned out. So I'm like, I'm looking at who do I want to work with? What's their investment? 
when is going to be a good time for me to work with them looking at my workload or you know what jazz you're good you can stay in the programs you're in you can just renew for another year and you can invest that you you can also put into some trainings for your team and your company what gets tracked grows i to this point i track every single thing to the t email lists what are our leads? How many leads we generate in each week? What are those email opens? Speaking engagements um, um, pitched, podcast pitched. How many are we booking? Every single thing. You, you can't grow it if you're not paying attention to the details. If you're just out here winging it, you cannot grow it. Again, this goes back to deciding whether or not you just want to side hustle or, or, or you want to go full time. Because if you want to go full time, then that means that you need to start thinking like someone who actually owns a profitable business. You need to start thinking like someone who is generating, you know, eight to ten thousand dollars per month or more. You need to start. You need to go ahead and start shifting your mindset there. What does that elevated? What is that? What does your elevated self think? What does your elevated self do? What types of habits does your elevated self have? You have to start thinking that you have to start becoming that now it's not about what you have done it's about who you become because you literally have to renew your mind and instill and incorporate new habits and new actions in order to accomplish new things does that make sense so you have to start tracking your progress and if you don't have a product yet or if you are in the process of creating a product such as a book to sell right now you can track your hat your daily habits and your progress does that make sense guys let me know if that makes sense <laughs> these are the things that i've done and that i continue to do let me know if this makes sense instagram let me know Facebook, let me know. All right. And don't forget to go ahead and share this out. If you're on Instagram, just hit the airplane button and share this out. And guys, make sure that you um, register for my for Sunday's webinar. Three keys that took me from creating lesson plans to creating a multi six-figure business in less than three years. All right. I'm really I've I've talked about it, but I've never taught it. So I'm really excited for uh, this weekend's webinar. Okay. Number three, the third lesson that I learned. And by the time I actually left my job, I had learned this, but I was still dealing with some money mindset issues. There is a limit to free and there's a limit to low price. One of the first lessons that I learned probably a month before my, um, a month before my contract, uh, my, my teaching contract was over. Um, was you always need to assess what you're selling, assess the prices, assess what's, what people are buying and what they aren't buying. Always add a high level package and eliminate the offering that people are not purchasing. This is one of the things that I did like literally a month before I left my job at the time I was offering publishing services because I had an agency and I knew that I had the ability to generate a consistent eight to 10 K a month. But at the time I was making around between seven and eight a month. Okay. Um, consistently. And I knew that I had what it took to hit my goal, which was 10 K a month. I, I, but I knew I was missing, there was a piece that I was missing and I couldn't figure it out. And so that's when I had made an investment. It was a $2,000 investment. At the time, it was the most I had ever paid. It was a $2,000 investment for four hours. I had never paid that much ever before in my life, right? Um, it was a $2,000 investment for a VIP day. You talking about $2,000 for four hours? <laughs> <laughs> but at the time I've, I've paid way more than that now, but uh, at the time that was one of the first large investments that I had made. 
And during our four hours, we did an, an audit where we looked at the things that I was selling, the price points I was selling them at, what was selling and what wasn't selling. So one of the things we did, we increased all of my rates. We looked at the publishing packages that I was offering that nobody was buying. We eliminated that. Then I had another package that I wanted to offer, but I was scared to offer it because I was, I feared that nobody would purchase it because um, they, they wouldn't want to, to make the investment. But my coach at the time was like, listen, put it together and put it out there. You don't know unless you put it out there. Put it out there and market it. Y'all, I put it together that day. That following Monday, I put it out there. And when I tell you, my my next three sales were nothing but the highest package. That's all people wanted. They weren't even looking at the other ones. They were looking at that brand new one that had the highest price. And I was like, oh my gosh, it shifted my life. It, it shifted me. Because I was like, I was the one holding me back. I was the bottleneck. By that time, people knew the product that I created. They knew that I was uh, reliable and that I wasn't going to run off with their cash or whatever. And so they wanted it and they got it. And for me, it was a game changer. It really, truly was. Because I was like, wow, like literally in less than 30 days, I had made triple the amount of what I would make in one month on my job. This was this was old, guys. This was three years ago. That that was that was three years ago. This was as I was transitioning out, and that's what shifted me. And sixty days later, I I hit um, a recurring ten k months. And I always say, if I had been too scared to make that investment, my life wouldn't have changed. I would have still been struggling, trying to figure it out on my out on my own. If I had, you know, said, oh, I'm about to leave my job. Now is not a good time. I need to hold on to this. I would not have been able to go to the next level. One of the reasons, and, and that was another thing. I never charge anything that I haven't paid myself. So when I charge $10,000, for a program, it's because I've paid ten thousand dollars in full for a program. If I charge fifteen or twenty grand, it's because I've paid that. I've invested that on my own learning. And when my students come to me, not only do they benefit from what I've been able to create, but they also benefit from what I've from my personal investments and what I've learned along the way. So I can't give someone. Twenty or thirty thousand dollars worth of knowledge that's going to shortcut your trajectory overnight and put you on the track to making eight to ten k a month. I can't sell that for three thousand dollars. I can't sell that for if I'm going to help you get to a hundred thousand, a hundred twenty twenty thousand dollars in a year. I can't sell that for three thousand dollars or five thousand dollars. Like the 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 investment has to be equivalent to the return. It, it absolutely has to. And this is one of the things that that I learned during, you know, during during that journey. And so that year that I left my job, I ended up making about one hundred twenty five thousand dollars that year from my business alone. And it was amazing to me because the first five months of the year I was holding down a nine to five. The first five months of the year, I was holding down a nine to five. But by December of that year, we had generated $125,000 in my company. And at the time, I it was just, you know, I had me and a, and a small team. And I always say, if I would have never made that initial investment to make the, the adjustments that I needed to make, I would not have gotten those results that I got. It was literally a small adjustment that I just didn't know. You don't know what you don't know. And I'm like, and, and for months I had been like, man, I know, I, I know I got it, but I'm missing the link. I'm missing the link. You know what? I need somebody who's doing this to show me the link that I'm missing. They took one look at it and in 30 minutes made some adjustments. Boom, 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 boom. This is what we're going to do. Raise your price to this. Get rid of that. Now go a, a, adjustment. Because 
I made the investment in someone that was more skilled than I was in that, in that, in that area at that time. And they knew what to do because they had done it. Was it an investment? Yes. Was it scary? Absolutely. I had never paid $2,000 at the time to anybody that I knew much less somebody that I didn't know. And I had seen or been, had been watching on Instagram. I had never paid that, but I, I prayed about it. I went with it. We had our VIP day. It worked out. But I put in the work too. I didn't just go to the VIP day and then didn't implement what I what I was supposed to. I immediately implemented it because I'm, I'm like, I got to get a return on my investment. I need that money back. And that's why I understand folks who spend money and then they don't go and put in the work. Like just because you spend money on something doesn't mean that the investment is going to work. You still have to actually go and implement and execute what you learn or else you just wasted your money. Be very clear about it. So you still have a responsibility in your own learning to actually implement and execute. A lot of people don't want to make that investment because they don't trust themselves to do the work. And so this is why when I meet people now, I'm like, you see my work, you know, the results that I can help you to get. And they're still like, well, I just found somebody cheaper. I'm like, okay, well, bye bye. But in the back of my mind, I, I feel sorry for them. Because I'm like, you're going to be stuck because a person that you're going to is only going to show you one piece. So you're going to have literally one piece. You're going to be totally lost in the rest. You're going to have one piece and you're going to have a, end up with a book that you can't sell because based on what you said to me on your application, you need a whole, whole bunch of cleaning and refining. But this person that you're going to, all they're going to do is just help you write what you want to write and create it into a book so you can say you have it. But what you want to do is not going to help you get the result that you want. I know I kind of went off the deep end there, but <laughs> kind of went off topic. But yeah, I just had to share that. So the fourth lesson that I learned, and guys, make sure that you sign up for my webinar. My webinar is Sunday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Three keys that took me from creating lesson plans to creating a multi six figure business in less than three years. You can sign up at jasminewomack.com forward slash lesson plans. Okay. The fourth lesson that I learned is that visibility and marketing is absolutely key. This is another space where a lot of authors fall off. Okay. Visibility and marketing. You have to be out there. You have to learn how to market yourself. You either have to learn how to market yourself or you're going to have to hire a marketing agency. Most new entrepreneurs do not have the budget to hire a marketing agency. Therefore, you're going to have to learn marketing and social media makes marketing so easy these days because all you need really is your cell phone and the courage to get on video. Just what you need. Canva allows you to create free professional looking graphic designs. You don't have to hire a graphic designer. You can use Canva and create your own. Get you some high quality photos. Use Canva. Choose two to three fonts, two colors, and you go for it. Guys, this is how I built my business literally for years. I would take photos, professional photos, and use Canva to make professional looking graphics before I could actually afford to pay the designer that I wanted to create graphics for me on a consistent basis. Canva was my jam. And video, getting on my phone or setting up a camera and shooting some videos. It's society has made it easy because it's a lot of it's free, but you have to have the courage and you have to have the work ethic to actually do it. And that's where people get stuck. The, tool, the tools are here. You have all the tools you need. The tools are here. Especially now they got templates for everything. Templates for captions. Templates for graphic design. They have everything you need. Where's your courage? Where's your work ethic? What is your work ethic actually saying that you want? So you have to be willing to put yourself out there. Visibility and marketing is key, guys. And the fifth lesson that I learned is that messaging is 
everything. Guys, it took me years to nail down my messaging because as my audience changed, my messaging had to change and I had to learn how to change my messaging. I had to learn how to alter my messaging and align it to the audience or the client that I wanted to talk to. If you're on Facebook, you probably see my son's head down here because he just came in here to my office. Dr. Gabrielle, the conference is, I'm gonna put it here. Hey, Pooh, how are you? Huh? Huh? What you say, Pooh? Your legs are tired. What you been doing? Resting. Resting? Okay. Mommy's almost done, okay? You want to chill out right there? Okay. Huh? I don't have any Sour Patch. No, no, I just saw some. Okay, go get them and show me. I can't go get them right now. Mommy's teaching. I'm almost finished though, okay? Okay, just wait, okay? Close, close the door back. You're going to have to wait. Thank y'all for being patient because y'all know I'm a mommy first. My son's only going to be small for so, so much longer, guys. He's growing up. If you look back at my old videos, you can see where he was a little bit of baby sitting in my lap. He's five years old now. Go look back at my old videos. He used to come hang out with me, crying and everything. I'd be trying to push through. Messaging is everything, all right? So when you are working to grow your, this is why it's really important for you to really identify your ideal client. I was talking to somebody today and I said, who is your ideal client? And she was like, my ideal client is women and men ages 18 and up, um, um, you know, single, dating, preparing for marriage and married. I said, absolutely not. It, it, it can't be. I, I, it, literally, it can't be. Because men and women have different needs. I said an 18-year-old has a different need from a 28-year-old in a different mindset when it comes to relationships. And I said, and in regards to someone's relationship status, you're talking about single people versus dating. People who are dating, their needs and challenges are different. You know, people who are dating... Um, versus people who are engaged to be married, their needs and challenges are different. People who are single, dating, engaged, versus those who are married, their needs and their challenges are totally different. You have to know exactly who you're talking to, the needs that they have and the challenges that they face. Many of you all are here because you see my social media content and it speaks to you. That's my messaging. I know exactly who I'm talking to. I'm talking to corporate professionals. I'm not talking to full-time entrepreneurs. I don't talk to people who are already coaches in the online space. I know that my clients likely may have tried their hand at a coaching program, but they may they likely haven't been successful and they definitely haven't been successful with enrolling clients at the price point that they want. They're not generating the revenue that they desire. I know that my clients are the absolute bomb when it comes to their job. They're the people that people come to. But I also know that my clients have an itch for entrepreneurship. My clients also have had some type of side hustle in addition to their jobs. I know this about my people because my people are, are reflective of who I once was. Y'all, I always kept a side job. I used to work at T-Mobile after work. I used to make crochet scarves in the wintertime after work <laughs> and sell them on Facebook for like $35. $50 depending on what they wanted in it. I always was trying to, I was always looking into some type of MLM, Melaleuca, Noni Juice. Thanks, Mike, the motivator. Noni Juice. What is that? That crazy rap thing, Body by Vi. Be Y'all acting like y'all don't know me. Y'all acting like you didn't do this too. I know you did. <laughs> I know you did. I know you did. 
Man, I'm not working on no team. I, I used to work at T-Mobile. I used to have a little part-time job at T-Mobile. I used to work at T-Mobile in the evenings. And they wanted, they started one. Well, the T-Mobile that I was at, they started getting robbed. And then they started wanting too much of my time. So they wanted us to like, when I realized that I had to stay there after the store closed to put up new campaigns and kits. And I was going to be there till 2 and 3 in the morning and then still have to go to work. I was like, I'm good on that. This y'all career, it's not mine. It's a side hustle for me. So I left. And then I tried to start my own thing. This was all the way back in 2000, 2008. <laughs> See, Carmelita, you currently do. Yeah, I, I know my people. Y'all, you're going to make some cakes. You're going to make some pies. You got something going on. Your job isn't the end all be all. I know that about my people. So when I create content, Mike, I used to sell Melaleuca, the like the tea tree oil soaps, because it was up my alley. And I was I chopped my hand at Beach Body too. And I used to sell Body Bye Bye. I like the Body Bye Bye, but then I stopped liking it because the powder made all shakes taste the same, no matter what ingredients it had in it. <laughs> I'm looking at the comments on Instagram. Y'all, y'all tell y'all quiet on Facebook. Tell me I'm not telling the truth about y'all. For real. I already know it. Right, you said I was hustling and you were seeking knives at at one point. <laughs> A lot of my friends, I had friends going into real estate. You know, a lot of my colleagues going into real estate or selling soaps and candles. On. Folks was getting their hustle on. But I know, like, that's what my clients, they, they that's what they want to do. Because general, essentially, they want to go into business for themselves. They just can't, they can't just, they, they just can't figure it out. So the entrepreneurial spirit is there. But one of the reasons... Why you're here is because in my content, I speak directly to you. I share, even in this live stream, I share examples that you can relate to. I share examples that you align with. That's messaging, guys. But let me tell you this, your messaging also attracts and it repels. Certain words attract, certain words repel. Certain images attract, certain images repel. I'm not a $49 coach. I'm absolutely not. My programs cost more than $3,000. They absolutely do. Based on the results that I'm able to help get from my clients or able to help my clients get, they absolutely so in my messaging, I share that information because if you're looking for the cheapest person, I'm probably not the person you want to try to come work with. However, if you're looking for the best results and you're looking to get a return on your, on your investment for years and years and years and years and years to come for the rest of your life, then I'm the person that you want to work with. Hands down. My messaging attracts people who value quality. It repels people who are looking for the cheapest, quickest thing. Your messaging has to do the same. And so this is why you have to be extremely specific about the person that you are targeting. Because it's deeper than I'm targeting people from uh, 35 to 45, you have to understand the way they think. You have to get into the psychographics. You got to get into the demographics. You got to get into their shopping habits, their thinking habits, their lifestyle habits. Are you, are your clients the ones who get up and, 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 and purchase the Pelotons? Or are they the app riders? <laughs> Different qualities. Are your clients the ones who shop at Walmart? Or are they going to aim for quality and status? 
I'm just saying, this is messaging. You have to segment and you got to get all the way specific in regards to who you're talking to. Messaging is everything because messaging alone will dictate and messaging will determine the type of clients that you attract. My new images, that's messaging. I'm getting so many compliments on my images. My new images is messaging because my images look high end, hands down. So when you see my images, when you visit my pages, you already know what it is. You know the quality that I'm delivering on. You already know that I'm not somebody that you can pay pennies to to work with. That's messaging, guys. And yes, those that sh photo shoot cost me several grips. Several. If I was only thinking about how much it costs and not the return on my investment, I'd be holding myself back. And I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs are always looking at how much does it cost? Oh, that's outside of my budget or da 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 da, -da. Are, are all of these type of mindset issues when it comes to money. And yes, historically, especially as black people, we have money mindset issues. We do. We do. But remember, when you want to become the full-time entrepreneur, there are some mindset shifts that you have to have. And it's different than operating in a side hustle mentality. It absolutely is. So you have to really hone in on your messaging, not just the words that you share, but the images as well, because it speaks to your client and it speaks to the level at which you operate as well as the level um, at, at which you, um, at, at which people think, you know, like they, they make a determination in regards to your investment. I wanted to set myself apart. I had to set, my, set myself apart because I'm not like, first of all, I'm not a writing coach. I hate that term. I'm a consultant. And so I needed to set myself apart from all the others in the industry who look at my content and then go repurpose it. I had to set myself apart. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm cool and I'm down to earth and I'm this, probably the sweetest person you know. And I'm going to do everything in my power to help you be successful. But when it comes to business, I'm not the homegirl around the block. If you look at my videos and stuff from a year or two ago, I was that, but I've changed and evolved. I don't want to be grouped in with that. I had to set myself apart with everything. That's messaging. So you have to determine what your messaging is going to, to speak and say. You have to ask yourself these questions. When people look at me, what is it that they think? When people think of my name, what words come to mind? But when people look at me in three months, what do I want them to think? How do I want them to think? feel when they see my images or, 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 or participate in my content? What do I want them to say? What do I want them to speak? What do I want them to feel? And what do I need to do to transform my business and my brand from where it is to where I want it to be? Those are the things you got to ask yourself. Guys, I hope to see you in my webinar on Sunday. Three keys that took me from creating lesson plans to creating a multi six-figure business in less than three years. It is a free training, so make sure that you go ahead and register. It's on Sunday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern, Sunday after church, guys. So make sure that you come and join me and go ahead and make plans to be there for, an, for at least an hour. We're going to be there for about an hour. All right, so just go ahead and clear your schedule. Dedicate that time to yourself and to your business. And for those of you all who are interested in attending the Six Figure Storyteller three-day conference, you have to be on the wait list, okay? Um, right now, early bird tickets are on sale until Monday. And so you have to be on the wait list to get access to the early bird tickets. Um, 
And the link to the early bird tickets is, if you're on Instagram, you can just click the link in my bio. It's there. If you're on Facebook, you can go to jasminewomack.com forward slash SFS dash waitlist. And I, I did put the link here in the comments on Facebook, guys. All right, so I, I got to get dinner started. My family is downstairs waiting. And we didn't do Taco Tuesday yesterday, so we're doing Taco Tuesday tonight. So I have uh, beef tacos and quesadillas to make, shrimp tacos and quesadillas to make, and vegetarian. I got like three different types of dishes I got to make. So what we're going to do, I'm still going to take Q&A, but we're going to keep it short. What questions do you have? I'll take a few questions. It's 6.07. I'll take questions. And it's about 6.13. I'm glad that you guys enjoyed this live stream on Facebook. Definitely make sure that you share this out if you found value in it. We're right now doing Q&A, so I'm, I'm waiting for... Um, if you have questions, you can submit your question. Um, we're just going to do questions for a couple of minutes. Oh, goodness. I don't see any questions coming through, though. All right. So no questions, guys. Okay. All right. I see you. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys in the webinar on Sunday. And I'll chat with you guys later. Hey, Dr. Gabrielle, when you um, sign, join the wait list, all the information will be sent to you. I'm sending emails out every day and all the information will be sent to you, okay? But it's three days of implementation and it's not a conference with a whole bunch of speakers, it's me teaching. The foundation of what you need to write your book and grow your business. <laughs> so it's literally me teaching for three days and you guys having the opportunity to implement what I'm teaching. Okay. I forgot I was still on live on Facebook. All right, Dr. Gabrielle, um, you'll make, uh, you'll receive an email from me first thing in the morning. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Y'all have a good, good night.